Let's pause and consider temptation. I don't think the church really understands temptation. I think many times people have thoughts and they think it's just their own head. Yeah, many people fo follow thoughts and it wasn't their own head. And it wasn't the Holy Spirit. What's left? The Bible says Jesus was tempted in all points, such as we are, yet he did not yield to sin or to that temptation. When God called you out of darkness, he expected you to pursue something that was the opposite of darkness. Would you agree? If the enemy cannot keep you from coming to God, he will do his best through his kingdom to keep you from being effective for God. And usually it boils down to your battle with yourself or it battles down to accusation against others. Now I want to go back and do a case history. In this case history, then I want to give you some productive um, steps to take that you can tap into what Pastor Benny was saying. Because don't tell me you don't have random thoughts that come out of nowheres that want to take you back to something in the past. And don't tell me you're not around people who want to drag you back there with them. So being an overcomer is more than being a Christian. Being a Christian, being a believer, is more than being a Christian. Now I want you to think with me now. I want you to track with me. Because to come here and not have tools to overcome means we're going to leave you with no tools to overcome and leave you to your own devices, leave you to your own thoughts. So I, I want to kind of, you know, give you, you might say this is a word from the Lord, but it's not through me, it's through the, word, it's through the Bible. Would you like to have a word from the Lord through the Bible? That's a sure word, would you agree with that? Good. I want to go back to Genesis. And I want to talk about Cain. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. So the Lord loves fat. Well, I don't know if it really means it exactly that way, but, you know, I often thought sometimes, I think God loves a barbecue. Because it would say that when they would do, the, would do this, the animal sacrifice back in that time, it said the smell of the sacrifice would come up as a sweet-smelling savor to the nostrils of the Lord. How many of you like the smell of a good barbecue cooking? You're a man after God's own heart. Now, I'm sure that's in moderation. But it's hard to be moderate when it comes to barbecue. Is it not? Unless you're a vegetarian, then you can have barbecue vegetables. And they're pretty tasty. Huh? Roasted. Oh, they call that roasting. I call it barbecuing. And, a, and it says here, And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. In other words, the Lord was partial to Abel's sacrifice and not to Cain's. You say, well, that's not fair. It's none of your business. The sacrifice wasn't to you. <laughs> so you don't get to judge it, do you? I, I would say perhaps if you were to think through this, perhaps Cain did something simply because it was required of him. Perhaps Abel did it more out of conscience than he did rote obedience. And that challenges all of us to make sure that what we do before the Father and before the Lord is not out of something that we're expected to do. Because everybody's doing it or it's what's expected if you're a Christian. and overcome. But this is coming from our conscience, coming from our heart. We serve the Lord because we want to, not because we have to. Let's move from that. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. That means angry. 
and his countenance fell. Who's, who's good at demonstrating a long face? Anybody here really experienced with, who here is really experienced? Well, I'm not asking anybody to say it's current events. You want me to do it? It's called a fat lip, droop, drooping fat lip. Well, that's what, how, how many of you have ever had any children and get their way? Do you know what that face looks like? It moves into adulthood also. We have our moments, don't we? So, Cain had a long face. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are you angry? Why are you wroth? Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? <laughs> That's a long face. If you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you do not well, now listen carefully, sin lies at the door. And then it goes on to say, what's the big deal? You're the eldest brother, Cain will, I mean, Abel will serve you forever. Why is that enough for you that, to be the eldest brother? The thing that the Lord said to Cain is this. Sin lies at the door. The Lord did not say, you're going to have a negative emotion. He did not say, you're going to have a psychological defect. In fact, the Lord said, there's something called sin that wants to influence you. It already is. Now, what if the Lord came to you and warned you about your thoughts? Do we need the Lord to come personally and warn us about our thoughts? Do, we, do you think you need that kind of do you think you need to be micromanaged by the Lord that every time you have a bad thought, he has to personally show up and say, hey, by the way, sin lies at your door? Or do you think at this stage we need to be more mature in understanding our thoughts? Many people follow their thoughts as if it were in an intelligent conclusion. That's, you know that ignorance is a form of knowledge? If I followed my thoughts... I wouldn't be here today. If I followed my thoughts, I wouldn't be an overcomer. If I followed my thoughts, how many of you have thoughts that you, you just wish wouldn't come to you anymore? You all do. Everybody has, because no one is immune to temptation. I said no one is immune to temptation. The Lord came to Peter. Let's kick it up here from Cain. Let's go on up into the times of Peter. This is the same Lord talking to Peter in the flesh is the same Lord that was back talking to Cain, the one that came in the flesh. And this very same one, the living word that became flesh, is the very same one that was in the flesh, the living word that became flesh, became one of us, was having a face-to-face -face conversation with one of his disciples. I haven't pulled this. I'm, I'm senior pastor and chief executive officer. But I have yet really to come to an employee of Being Help or Hope is Generations Church and say, you know, I felt like it a few times. But say, listen, can I have a word with you? Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Oh, I need a, I need a counseling session then. I need deliverance. You know what the Lord said to Peter? Satan desires to sift you like wheat. And when you have recovered yourself, strengthen the brethren. You know what the Lord was? The Lord was saying the very same thing to Peter that he said to Cain. Peter, sin is lying at your door. Those thoughts that you're having and will have, Peter, aren't from me, aren't from God. They're from the enemy. Now, here the Lord identifies sin directly as a being under the rulership of Satan. And that's that kingdom that Satan rules over, invisible, that wants access to your lives. To give you thoughts, to make you to 
think and act and speak in ways that don't let you pass through the mess you saw here this morning. You have all the tools you need to overcome. But it may be you need to have proper thinking to overcome. You cannot overcome while you're overthrowing God's word in your life. But if you don't know God's word, how can you overcome? And if you don't know God's word, how can you have any faith to overcome? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by, oh, the word of God, Cain. Why a long face? Why is your countenance falling, Cain? Cain, can I, can I give you a, a word? Sin wants to influence you. Did sin influence Cain? Did Cain kill Abel? Did sin influence Peter? Did Peter fall? Did sin influence Judas? Did Judas fall? Did sin try to influence Jesus? Did he fall? Oh, I want to follow that guy. What kind of word from God do you need today? Everybody's wanting a word. Really? Why? You have a Bible. People ask me many times in conferences, well, pastor, do you have a word for me? I said, sure. What is it? Read your Bible. Because everything that we would need to hear from God has already been written in your Bibles if you'll go look for it. And how you conduct yourself with the Godhead, how you conduct yourself about yourself, and how you conduct yourself with others. And how you get along in the church with each other. And how you get along in your families with each other. And how you get along even with a boss that is mean, spiteful, and absolutely makes you feel yucky. The Bible even covers your responsibility that you're not even working for that lousy boss or that boss, good boss with lousy attitude, let me put it that way. But you're actually working for the Lord. Everything that's in your life, in your journey, and how to think, speak, and act is already found in your Bibles. And the examples of others before you and how they succeeded or have fallen are there also. That you may not just learn from the success of others, but you also can learn from the failures of others. And those examples are found in Scripture. God is not responsible for our ignorance. Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. And when you have and when you have recovered yourself, excuse me, I'm just having a wife moment. When you, well, it's normal. When you have recovered yourself, strengthen the brethren. Key word, when you have recovered yourself. 